Uh, yep, that's all good. So yeah, I think we can go straight ahead. This is our last talk of the session by Jeffrey Wolfert on information geometry of reversible Markov chains. So yeah, go ahead. So hello everybody. Many thanks for the EIID committee for uh, for having me today. Uh, today I will discuss uh, reversible Markov chains. This is joint work with Shun Watanabe. And uh, I just want to say that you can access the preprint at uh, this link here at the bottom of the first slide, okay? So let's start with some uh, some introduction, some some notation. We'll, uh, we'll work over some, some finite space x that we will identify with the integers up to m. We'll denote a positive functions of our square by this f plus. If the plus is missing here, it will just mean the entirety of, of all functions. And we'll be uh, focusing uh, on irreducible kernels. Uh, so if E is some uh, strongly connected uh, graph, if E is the edge set of some strongly connected graph, we'll uh, denote by W X E the set of all irreducible kernels over X E. And for simplicity, uh, we'll often take E to be equal to the whole X squared. That means we'll consider positive kernels, but most of the of the arguments will still be valid uh, in the irreducible case. I might sometimes say irreducible instead of instead of positive and vice versa. So mostly we'll work with W. Our stationary distribution, which is just going to be unique in our case from irreducibility, will be denoted by pi and the edge measure, which is the distribution of uh, stationary pairs, will be denoted by, by Q here. Uh, so let's let's start with uh, by using our notation to define uh, what we'll rely on uh, heavily, uh, we'll define some sort of rescaling from irreducible matrices to uh, stochastic matrices. So if P tilde here is just irreducible, uh, we can define a stochastic, we can rescale it to be a stochastic kernel uh, using this, this form here, where Rho will denote the uh, pair of Frobenius root of P tilde and V will be the right uh, corresponding eigenvector. Uh, since we'll be dealing with reversible, reversible Markov chains, let me introduce some uh, critical concepts. Uh, for any P, you can define the time reversal of P, which corresponds to the transition kernel of the observations observed in, uh, in reverse time. And this uh, will be just given by the, this expression on the right. The chain will be set uh, reversible if it verifies the detailed balanced equation here in red. And W ref will just be the set of all reversible kernels for us. Now, these uh, reversible chains uh, have numerous uh, mathematical interesting properties. For example, their spectrum is real. It is stable under some uh, suitable perturbations. Another interesting fact is that the mixing time of a chain, which is the time it takes of a chain to reach stationarity, is governed by the spectral gap of this, uh, of this operator. And stationary distribution, for example, is easy to compute or it is easier than in the general case. Some historical remarks. The first treatments of the reversible chains date back to, to Kolmogorov's work in 1936 and 37. He was inspired by uh, Erwin Schwed. If you want to know more about the history of reversible chains, I recommend you to read uh, this paper by Dobrushin and others on, in uh, 1988. Uh, let me just recall briefly some facts about exponential families of distributions. So that we also agree on the notation here. So exponential family can be factored in such a way here, where we will call theta the natural parameter T will be a sufficient statistic. Uh, a, a is going to be the log partition function, which ensures the sums to one, and H is a carrier measure, which oftentimes can just be one. Uh, typical examples include the normal distribution, Poisson distribution, and many of the distributions you like are in this set. Uh, there is a strong incentives for uh, analyzing and studying these exponential families because of their properties. They find applications in Bayesian estimation, and they can be treated from an information geometry perspective. That means you can see here your exponential family being just a submanifold of all distributions. It can be locally, it can be mapped to, to RD, 
where d can be much lower than the number of states uh, of uh, of of points uh, of bins in your channel. Yeah. Uh, now this theory of exponential families can be uh, extended to uh, reverse to to transition kernels of uh, of Markov chains. So this was uh, properly written down in uh, 2005 by uh, by Nagaoka. Uh, if uh, if theta is now a parameter space and ve is parameterized uh, by uh, some small theta here, which belongs to this uh, parameter space, we'll, we'll say that uh, this ve here is an e family of Markov kernels with natural parameter theta. Whenever here there exists a set of functions, so we have more functions now, now, such that you can write p theta as the exponential of this sum here. So in this sum, you can recognize a carrier term that you saw before. You can also recognize the natural parameter of here, some corresponding sufficient statistic. Um, and here, the last terms will uh, be here to ensure stochasticity of your of your kernel, right? Before you only needed that it sums to one, but now you also need that every row of your kernel sums up to one. And these terms are just given by the stochastic mapping that we saw before. Uh, as an example, so the set of all re irreducible chains uh, over X with connection uh, with edge set E forms an E family of dimension of the size of E minus the size of X. And you can express P uh, over the spaces here of uh, Kronecker, uh, where here theta I, uh, theta I, J, yes, will be this logarithm, right? And these terms on the bottom here will just correspond to these last three terms. Next. <clears throat> we'll, uh, besides exponential families, we'll also define mixture families. We'll say that DM is a mixture family when it's a uh, edge measure can be written as a mixture. Right. So there exists a set of C, uh, F1 to FD, such that you can write every edge measure of every member of this family uh, in, this, in this way. All right. uh, as an example, as an example for you, the set of positive doubly stochastic matrices forms an M family. This was uh, shown, for example, in, uh, 2000, in 2016. Uh, so doubly stochastic matrices are stochastic matrices such that the transpose is also stochastic. Uh, there, there have been a few applications in this geometric approach. I'd like to, to mention just a few pointers for, for you. There has been for a parm estimation uh, problem in Markov chains. It does also find the uh, uses in hypothesis testing prop in the local equivalence problem with Markov, Markov models in large deviations and in the parameter estimation problem for HMMs. Uh, so what are our questions? Uh, we're less concerned about the applications. What we're more concerned is to understand what reversibility induces uh, for a geometry here. So what, what are the additional properties that we will gain from adding the reversibility uh, hypothesis? We'll also be interested in what is and what is not any e family, and what is and what is not an, e, an M family. We focused on WREV, but not only. We also want to see what happens between WREV and the ambient uh, space of all kernels. And we also want to see how WREV relates with some of its uh, notable subfamilies. See which ones uh, they are, which, which they are. Uh, first, an observation. So if now I'm taking a subset of all, of all uh, irreducible kernels, I can define the time reversal of the family to be just the family of all the time reversals. And uh, the first thing we can quickly observe is that if DM is an M family, then so is V star M is also an M family. Similarly, if V is an E family, then V star is also an E family. So our next, our next question is, is okay, what remains unchanged by taking the, the time reversal. If you have just one point, this corresponds to reversible chains. If you have a collection, then we'll define what we call reversible e, re reversible e families. So V is going to be reversible when every member of the family is reversible. An example of a reversible E family is, for example, uh, 
uh, the lazy random walks on the M cycle. But we would like to get some, some more um, a procedural way of determining whether a family is reversible or not from its parameterization. So if, if I'm giving you uh, all the GIs and if I'm giving you K of an E family, uh, how would you determine whether this family is reversible or not? So there, there's more than one way of doing this. We'll, but I'll try to walk you through one of these ways. Uh, first, let me remind you of the Kolmogorov criterion, which is uh, that if now you, you're given an irreducible, uh, an irreducible uh, kernel, and you're considering the, the set of all closed paths, then P is reversible, if and only for every closed path. If you walk in uh, in reverse, or if you walk in the direct uh, orientation, then the, the probability will be the same. Now, uh, in the same vibe, you can define uh, log-reversible functions. Uh, so H will be a log-reversible functions whenever uh, it satisfies now the same property except what it is defined for sums instead of products. Hmm? So now we can characterize uh, reversible E families uh, by, by the following, uh, following statement. So suppose I'm giving you B as, uh, as expressed by K and GI, then the two following statements are equivalent. So B is reversible, or B is such that K and all the GIs are all log reversible functions. In the non-positive case, uh, you also would be required then uh, the, the edge set be symmetric. Now suddenly you have a lot of uh, equations you need to check uh, in order to, to decide whether this family uh, would be reversible or not. But you can, uh, can, do, you can do better. You can save it for, um, for some h in f plus log of h plus will be log reversible uh, if and only if so this uh, this Hadamard product here of uh, h transpose and uh, the pair forbidden projector pr projection of h will be a symmetric matrix so here u u and v are just the left and right eigenvectors uh, pf eigenvectors of h and their normal supply such that the inner product is one uh, if now h would be re would be represented by a stochastic matrix, not not generally a function, but if it was a stochastic matrix, you would recover uh, detailed balanced equations here. Right, so this is strictly more interesting. Uh, let let me discuss uh, the affine structures that we obtain here. Log reversible functions can be endowed with a vector space structure. So let's call this uh, F rev for. Uh, the vector space of all log reversible functions. Let's talk also about n. So these are all the functions such that uh, over, over x squared such that there exists a function f allowing you to write h in such a difference plus some constant. So this also forms a vector space and you can, uh, you can show that uh, there is this inclusion here when n is strictly contained in f rev which is strictly contained in f. Um, this allows us to, to talk about the uh, quotient space GREV of, uh, of generators. And uh, you, can, you can also see that uh, you can map GREV to WREV using this mapping here defined on the right, which is smooth. So GREV being mapped to WREV is enough for us to, to state the following theorem. So I'll merge here a few of them. If now I'm denoting T the the edge set, uh, but all but uh, let's say uh, below the diagonal, right, including the diagonal, except you're removing one point of let's say the last line where where you're then you become over specified. So T if T is this set, then you can you can see that this size is uh, is x x plus one divided by two minus one, and G rev so this this quotient here is a t-dimensional vector space. So this is enough for us to say that uh, WREV is an E family, and it is also an M family. The dimension of this, uh, of this family is also T. And uh, we construct the basis of GIJs for, for this GREV. 
Okay, so this will just be the uh, symmetric uh, Kronecker tier. Uh, similarly, as uh, I showed you before, how to parameterize the the set of all uh, here the positive kernels uh, in example two before. Here is a, is a way of, uh, of writing the same, but only for reversible uh, kernels. So if now that if p is some reversible uh, kernel, stationary distribution phi, using the basis we, we found before, we can write p as a member of the m family, right? In such a way, and not only this, but we can also write p as a member of the e family of uh, reversible kernels, where here the expression is a, is a bit uh, more uh, more complicated. But this red term here, which corresponds to your beta ij, right? So you can express it over the basis gij. And those last term here, remember, will just be here to ensure the, the stochasticity. OK, now that we have uh, Uh, everything okay? Oh. Uh, video doesn't work, right? I can see I can see a slides on reversible EM projection. Okay, but video yeah. doesn't work. Okay, no, it's okay now. I think. Okay, uh, so let's talk about uh, projecting projecting on the on the reversible family. Uh, let me, let me talk about the process of reversibilization. If I'm giving you some, some irreducible P, it's possible for you to construct a reversible kernel out of this P. For example, you can just take P, its time uh, reversal, add them together and divide by two. This would give you a reversible kernel. Alternatively, you can also uh, multiply P and P star together. That also gives you reversible kernel. You can also dilate it. But uh, let's say out of all of these reversibilization, which is the best, depends on the case. And uh, let's say for, for a irreducible P, we're interested in, in the one that is closest to, to P now. And why should we find uh, reversibilizations? Because uh, simply because properties of chains are, are powerful, but they're also brittle. So if, uh, if now you're one, one of the entries will change a little bit, you're losing the the real quality of your spectrum. You're also uh, losing perturbation bounds. For example, Viles inequality that breaks down and you're picking up an exponent in the, in the dimension. Uh, this problem of finding the closest reversible chain was uh, also analyzed by uh, Nielsen and Weber in 2015. They considered their matrix norms induced by scalar products. They showed that projection is unique, is unique and uh, you can obtain it by solving a convex minimization problem. Uh, in our case, we'll, uh, we'll frame the problem a just a little bit differently. Instead of considering uh, this sort of norms, we'll consider the divergence rates between the, the processes uh, defined by some irreducible P1 and P2. So recall that you can express this divergence rate as follows. If uh, you're given some, some P here, here and you want to project it onto WREV, uh, what you want to, what you're interested in is in is in this PE, right? It's this argmin overall member of the set of reversible chains. Now uh, we can give you the answer. We can tell you that PE is actually equal to some to some rescaling of the uh, square root of the Adama product of P and its uh, time reversal. Okay. But not only this, but uh, also if now you're given some P bar which is uh, equal or different from P, but which is also reversible, you're also enjoying this uh, Pythagor Pythagorean identity where the divergence from P to P bar suddenly can be decomposed into the divergence from P to PE plus the divergence from PE to P bar. Uh, right, so divergence rate is uh, not a symmetric function. You also have a different projection where you're just flipping the the arguments of D here. Uh, if you're considering uh, now the argument with respect to this uh, flip divergence, you also uh, get uh, a closed form for PM, which corresponds exactly here 
to the uh, additive reversibilization of P. So this is interesting. Now note that P might be different from PM, of course. Uh, in this other direction, you're also enjoying uh, Pythagorean inequality. Uh, so here the divergence from any P bar to P is equal to the divergence from, uh, from P bar to PM plus divergence from PM to P. And uh, finally, uh, there is a connection between the divergence from uh, PE to P and the divergence from uh, P, uh, P star to PE. That's, this connection is that they're actually equal, right? So here you have the bisection property. Let me discuss uh, briefly uh, edge measures now. Uh, recall that if uh, P is reversible, then the edge measure must be symmetric. If, if now we write uh, this curly Q to be the set of all edge measures and Q rev to be the set of all reversible edge measures, uh, we, we can show that Q rev is actually uh, isomorphic to the simplex over x x plus one over two. Uh, and uh, we can show that, uh, so this actually shows that Q rev is an E family, is an E, is an N and M family of, uh, of all the distributions over, uh, over pairs. It gives also the dimension of Q rev, which is exactly the dimension here of this simplex. And surprisingly, uh, Q itself is not an E family in Vx squared. So although Q is not an E family here, Q rev is an E family. And for, for, uh, for kernels, uh, let me recall you that both W and W rev were E families and M families. Uh, this brings us to, to the idea of, uh, of seeing what happens with relation to other usual families. So let, let's uh, consider for bistochastic kernels, uh, symmetric kernels, and memory of kernels. So in, in this table here, this collects a bunch of results that are already known on, or that we show ourselves. So W, the set of all chains, is both an M family and an E family. W rev, as this is, this is the topic of what we're talking now, is also an M family and an E family. Bistochastic chains were an M family, as proven before, and they're actually not an E family. Symmetric chains are an M family, but they're surprisingly not an E family. And IID chains, meaning memoryless kernels, where you know, all the rows are equal to the to the stationary distribution, these do uh, not form an M family, but they do form an E family. Uh, this gives us a certain uh, certain hierarchies between uh, between families here. So, because IID chains are contained in, the, in the reversible chains, right? So here we you have this E hierarchy and two M hierarchy. Finally, I would like to discuss uh, the generation of, uh, of reversible kernels. So let's, let's talk about this. Let's define for, uh, for starter the, what, what is the M hull of, uh, of some family. So you're taking a finite uh, amount of members of this family and you're taking mixtures of, this, uh, of these members. This gives you a larger family. So this will uh, generate what we call the M hull of the here, right? And uh, it turns out that if you're doing this with, uh, so first of all, if you're doing this with an M family, you recover the same M family. But if you're doing this, for example, with uh, with IID kernels, which we said are not an F an M family, but just an E family, you're taking the M hull of it, you recover a set of all reversible kernels. Uh, similarly, if uh, instead of uh, talking about the M hull, you want to discuss the E hull of the chain, it's the same concept except you're working with uh, uh, the exponential hull now. So in this case, uh, you can uh, you can consider now the this hull of uh, of a set of all symmetric chains, and here again you you see that you obtain a set of all reversible chains. So this this some, somehow connects W rev with W sim and W uh, IID in a very elegant uh, an elegant way. Uh, let me summarize uh, what we've discussed. So we saw that E and M families are invariant under uh, time reversal operation. We introduce 
the concept of a reversible E family and provide a characterization for them. If you give K and the GIs, you can decide whether this family is reversible or not quite efficiently. Perhaps surprisingly, uh, WREV forms both an E and F family. Uh, furthermore, uh, we construct a, a basis for, uh, for GREV and write an explicit parameterization for them. Uh, we show that the uh, EM projections uh, verify Pythagorean identities. We can give uh, expressions for them. Uh, one of them is closed, the other one is easy to compute as long as you assume that computing an eigenvector is easy. And uh, they're also equidistant from an irreducible kernel and its time reversal. Uh, furthermore, we show that uh, unlike the set of all irreducible edge measure, the set of reversible ones form a new family in distributions over the pair. And finally, okay, the WREV is in a sense the, the minimal exponential family that contains symmetric kernels. And it's also the, the smallest M family that contains uh, WIAD, which means it, it contains memoryless uh, Markov kernels. Uh, here are our preferences. I will put the slides online so you can check them out. And uh, thank you for listening. Here is the preprint if you want to take a look. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, if there's any questions from the audience again, uh, feel free to type or unmute. I might just quickly ask something first. Um, I know you said that you're not focusing a lot on applications or anything here, but do you have any comments on like how these tools might be applied in something like estimation or hypothesis testing or somewhere else? As a for, for hypothesis testing, and uh, I, I think I gave you a uh, get back to, to this list here. Hmm. So here, there here is a list of uh, possible uh, applications of the, of the geometric approach. Now, if if you ask what is the application of knowing that. Uh, the WRF, for example, is, is an E or an M family. So even if you, let's say, even if you didn't know what the closed form of projection were, you could always, uh, you could already say that, that these exist and you could, you could already have this, these Pythagorean identities for free here because of the flatness of WRF. And so this is a direct application of WRF being, having those properties. Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions, so just wait a few more seconds, just in case. Okay, otherwise, um, it's, it's past the session end time anyway, so thank you again um, to Jeffrey and thank you to all the speakers. Um, I think now there's a half hour break before the next session.